macroinvertebrates are organisms that will help us tell the overall health of Fish Creek. Along with water quality analysis, we will be able to determine whether it is a suitable habitat for our salmon to live in. Benthic macroinvertebrates. Benthic means an organism that lives on the bottom of a body of water. So for example, streams, rivers, or ponds. Macro means large. And an invertebrate is an animal without a backbone. So, combining those two terms, a macroinvertebrate is a large water-dwelling invertebrate, uh, and we are able to see them without the use of a microscope. So macroinvertebrates are organisms that have no backbone, they're visible without a microscope, they're found in fresh water, they typically eat leaves and algae in the stream, and they're a source of energy for large animals. Some examples that we'll find in the stream are snails, crayfish, worms, fly larvae, mayfly, caddisfly, or stonefly larvae, clams, and water beetles. There are certain types of macroinvertebrates that are indicator species. An ind indicator species is an organism that tells a scientist if there's a problem with that body of water. The problem being pollution. Macroinvertebrates are important because they're a source of energy for larger animals. Fish eat them, and then the fish are eaten by birds, raccoons, or even humans. So they help in the food web. There are certain macroinvertebrates that are good indicators of a stream's health. Many of them have different sizes, shapes, they have different adaptations that help to make it easy for scientists to learn if the stream is healthy. Where will we find macroinvertebrates? We'll find them on the bottom of the stream. They'll be attached to rocks. They may also be attached to plants or plant parts, like roots. Uh, we'll also find them in fast-moving sections of the water because they need oxygen. These indicator species they need lots of oxygen to survive. If there's poor oxygen, they typically die if they're an indicator species. And so they do not uh, end up providing food for trout, kingfishers, salmon, or many other organisms that are found in the bodies of water. There are some macroinvertebrates that need poor or dirty water to survive, and so that tells scientists that the water is polluted. If we find macroinvertebrates that are found only in healthy bodies of water, that tells us that the water is a clean stream. Some other macroinvertebrates are found in moderately clean bodies of water, and so that tells scientists that the water is either starting to get worse or in the process of getting better. And then other macroinvertebrates only survive in very poor water qualities, so that tells us that the water quality in that environment is not very good. Here's a picture of some different types of macroinvertebrates we may find. So group one macroinvertebrates are the macroinvertebrates that do not tolerate pollution. They include different types of stoneflies, mayflies, and caddisflies, and they will help us know that the stream is healthy. So well, while we are going through and finding populations of organisms, these macroinvertebrates, we are going to be looking for mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies in order to tell if the stream is a healthy environment for our salmon to survive. Uh, here are a number of other group one macroinvertebrates. So stonefly nymphs, caddisfly larva, mayfly nymph, uh, alderfly nymph, uh, fishfly larva. Uh, we can look for water pennies. Um, we can also look for adult stoneflies, caddisflies, mayflies, and alderflies. If we find adults, then we can assume that uh, the young, the larva, uh, or nymphs have lived there as well or are living there. Uh, we can look for helgramites, 
which is a Dobson fly larva. Uh, freshwater mussels are good indicators of uh, good stream health. Um, pouch snails are good indicators of stream health uh, as well. Um, and then some different types of, uh, of snails as well can help to indicate uh, overall health in a stream or in any body of water for that matter. Uh, here's a picture of a stonefly larva. This is actually a larva that we found last year. Uh, so we're going to keep our eyes open for these guys uh, when we do our, our uh, macroinvertebrate study in Fish Creek. Group 2 macroinvertebrates, they tolerate some pollution. The number of different macroinvertebrates become less as pollution rises. Uh, so there will be fewer number of stoneflies, uh, fewer mayflies, uh, and then also very few caddisflies as well. Uh, soft body worms and fly larvae also tend to increase. Beetles are probably still in the stream. Uh, mollusks we will probably not find if, the, if it's a moderately healthy stream. Uh, here's a number of group 2 macroinvertebrates. These are uh, macroinvertebrates that tolerate some pollution. Uh, so dragonfly larva, damselfly larva, uh, some of those different beetles, adults and larva. Um, so take a moment, just kind of scan through these different uh, species that may be found. Uh, if we find crayfish, scuds, uh, water scorpions, um, all of these may indicate that it's a moderately healthy stream. Also keep your eye on the uh, branches or on any of the vegetation around. If you start noticing adult damselflies uh, or dragonflies in the area, you may um, be able to indicate that, or it may be an indicator that the overall stream health is somewhat, um, somewhat polluted. Group 3 macroinvertebrates, they all tolerate pollution. So stoneflies are not present at all in a group 3 stream, so most of them have all uh, died off due to the pollution. Uh, there's a few mayflies and cat caddisflies that may be found there, but the overall population is going to be minimal. Um, most of the organisms that are found are soft-bodied am animals, um, so fly larvae, leeches, and planaria. So examples of roundworm and tapeworm may be found there. Some amphipods, so these are fast-moving shrimp-looking creatures. Uh, so these are group three, which are pollution-tolerant macroinvertebrates. If we find large populations of these, we can conclude that the uh, overall stream health is probably not fantastic. So that concludes our macroinvertebrate study uh, and kind of some content information for our Salmon in the Classroom project at Fish Creek. Um, make sure that you're taking accurate measurements during uh, this lab, making sure that you're keeping uh, good data as far as the number of macroinvertebrates that are found uh, and the species that are found. This information will be put in an overall population graph uh, where we can then compare and identify uh, what species are found in abundance, which ones are not found at all, uh, and that'll help us to identify um, the overall stream health and whether it is an appropriate place for us to be releasing our salmon.